Hello, and welcome again to the University Church of Christ, uh, to our Bible study. We pray that you are finding these Bible studies useful and helpful in your understanding of God's Word. We will be continuing our study in, from the book of 2 Thessalonians, chapter 1. Uh, tonight we'll be uh, covering verses 9 through 12. So we invite you to grab a pencil, a piece of paper, um, and an open Bible that you can follow along with the many scriptures that we'll be sharing with you uh, through this particular time of study. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this time, and we just ask that you would bless our minds. Uh, things that we see written on the pages of inspiration, that we'll have a greater desire to do them so that we can be pleasing and acceptable to you. Especially, Father, we pray that those who do not have a knowledge of you or who have not yet obeyed your truth, Father, that they'll come to know you in a much deeper way that they can be numbered among those who you are coming back for. In your son Jesus' name we pray this, amen. Okay, um, we um, again are studying the book of Second Thessalonians um, and uh, we've covered for the most part the first chapter already um, and we are drawing down to the concluding verses of this particular chapter um, and one thing that I could say is that they're full. Um, and again, I want to tell you there's no way that we can draw everything that there is out of this particular uh, passage of scripture, um, but we'll try to give us enough to uh, think about just a little bit. Our study left us with uh, those who, um, who do not know God and those who do not obey the truth, how God has, uh, he and his mighty angels, uh, a plan that he's going to deal with them uh, on that particular day when he comes uh, with flaming swords and, uh, and all sorts of things that we read about in scripture. And he's coming to turn things around but he's also coming to punish. Um, so uh, there's where, where our study left off uh, pretty much. Um, and there's one word that was left in our study, um, the word penalty that I think is important for us to understand going forward. Uh, penalty, um, and I looked this up uh, through the Bible um, and found it very rarely used. Um, I believe I did not find it used once in the King James Version um, and very few times in other translations, some two of which I'll make reference to. But um, I, I went to um, the Google Dictionary, um, there's my sightings on the bottom, um, and they gave me three definitions um, one for sports, um, but this one was um, extremely, I think, to the point um, that we are looking for. It's a punishment imposed for breaking a law, rule, or contract. The charge carries a maximum penalty of 10 years imprisonment, similar, similar words, uh, punishment, sanction, punitive action, retribution, pence, fine, forfeit sentence. Um, and the opposite of punishment, of course, or penalty uh, is reward. So um, it's pretty clear cut what the word is um, in our own language, but um, the amounts of times that we found it written. Um, and, and again, you got to be careful about using words because they can translate out in different ways. But the direct use of the word, um, I only found um, in Romans chapter one, 
and verse number 27 in the New King James Version and um, the New uh, American Standard uh, Bible. Um, and that was speaking of those who were practicing uh, uh, homosexuality um, and how God had a penalty for that particular behavior. And then uh, in Hebrews chapter two in verse number two, um, again, um, and this is the updated um, uh, New American Standard Bible that reads um, about the angels who uh, were appointed and a, a word that they must uh, keep. Um, and there will be penalty for their transgressions and their disobedience. Uh, so um, those are the couple of times that we see the word penalty. But the idea is definitely present throughout scripture. Uh, penalty, um, the, the wages of sin um, is death. Um, and we see where God tells the children of Israel to do certain things or, uh, quite frankly, pay the penalty, uh, suffer a pestilence or, 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 or something that, um, that, that was um, opposite of a reward. Uh, so we see the principle in plenty of places throughout the uh, Bible and throughout the New Testament. Getting to the scriptures that we are studying, um, and hopefully we'll understand that um, we're talking about those uh, people who do not know God and who do not obey the truth. Um, and uh, in terms of penalty, uh, there's a penalty for that. Um, and Paul, um, Paul pretty much opens it up in no uncertain terms um, that um, that is pretty powerful, and I hope that if there's someone that has not yet obeyed God or who does not yet know God, that you'll come to know him uh, before um, some of these things um, come to pass that we're talking about. We're talking about in the judgment setting, um, and in verse 9 of Second Thessalonians chapter 1, uh, Paul writes, these shall be punished with uh, everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. When he comes, verse 10, when he comes uh, in that day to be glorified in his saints and to be admired among all those who believe because our testimony among you was believed. So, um, I, 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 I can't imagine life without the presence of God, um, especially when we look at um, the things that are described um, as being in the pre uh, away from the presence of God um, in that everlasting, eternal uh, place that, that uh, God has reserved for those who um, do not obey him and who do not have knowledge. Um, and by the way, I just want to mention um, in one of the homework questions, hopefully the group that's assigned this question, um, I, I want us to understand that hell is not designed for us. It's designed for the devil and his angels. But certainly he um, has intention of taking as many of us with him um, as he can to that place of torment and torture. But um, life away from the presence of God um, is, 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 is quite the uh, thought. And uh, I just want us to take a look at what some of that um, looks like. Um, we see um, outer darkness um, as described um, in, by Jesus in Matthew chapter eight, in verse number 12. Um, weeping, wailing, gnashing of teeth, Matthew chapter 22 and verse number 13. Um, it, it's described as a furnace. Um, and, um, and then of course, um, a, a, a furnace is, is very hot. Um, and so it, it, it's uncomfortable. Um, and uh, if the furnace is not enough, there's a lake that uh, burns with fire and brimstone 
um, according to the revelation. Um, and you know, this, this is just, um, um, just kind of uh, a place where it doesn't sound like we uh, would want to be, but um, this is not as bad as it gets. Um, it, 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 the, the, that fire um, from brimstones in the furnace, it's unquenchable, John says uh, in uh, Matthew chapter 3 and verse number 12. Um, and uh, again, Jesus says that it's everlasting fire um, and everlasting punishment. Now, understand what that means. That means that once you get there, you, you're not leaving. Uh, once you get to this place of torment, this place of torture, this place of everlasting fire, where there's weeping and out of darkness, hey, that's it. That's, that's, that's the final um, judgment for you uh, once you reach to this particular point. Um, and there's no getting off. You, 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 you can't just um, get up and leave. Um, you, you're going to have to stay um, without, um, without um, any kind of relief. Um, you, you're going to be in a district of torment. Uh, and we see this in um, Rich Man and Lazarus um, in Luke chapter 16, verse 23, uh, where there was that gulf fix. And, um, and, 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 one, and one side had the presence of God and one side did not. And we see some of the unquench some of the unquenchable um, fires and thirsts that take place, um, even in that particular uh, story that Jesus told. Um, and and here's the one that gets me: the undying worms in Mark chapter nine and verse forty-four. Could you imagine that? Um, just just waiting for the worms to die, and they never do. And they oh, it's, it, 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 it's quite a thought. Um, and um, just, um, just, just uh, know that this this goes on and on and on. And um, just by the way, let me um, recommend um, that um, Brother Billy Washington has a um, has a uh, set of videos out. Um, one of them is called, um, I believe, the first five minutes of death. And he'll go through all of this stuff here and he'll let us know, and this is the truth, um, that after all of this, you're not even through the first 10 seconds of eternity. It's a long time and we need to, and, and men need to consider what's there um, when they're uh, disobeying and not knowing God, because this is the end of those men. Uh, places of outer darkness, weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth, a furnace, a lake that fire, a lake of fire and brimstones, unquenchable fire, everlasting fire, everlasting punishment, in a district of torment and undying worms. In contrast to that, I just want us to, um, to just take a breath and just look at the wonderful things that God really has planned for his people and those people that are in his presence. Um, in, in contrast to that, um, look at what the Revelator says um, in Revelation chapter 21 and verses one through four. And I put these up here because they're words that are so encouraging to just hang on uh, for the child of God. He said, now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. Also, there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them. And they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, no more sorrow, no more crying. There shall be no more pain for the former things have passed away. What a, what a, what a, what a wonderful thing to be in the presence of God. Um, and that's not all. Look at, look at again what John says, Revelation chapter 22 
verses one through five. And he showed me a pure river of water, and he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as a crystal, proceeding from the throne of God uh, and of the Lamb. In the middle of his streets and on either sides of the river was the tree of life, which bore 12 fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there were, and uh, there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it. And his servants shall serve him, and they shall see his face, and his name shall be on their forehead. There shall be no night there. They need no lamps nor light of the sun, for the Lord gives them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. Boy, what a picture of what it means to live in the presence of God as opposed to living outside of the presence of God. And so it would behoove you if you don't know God yet, um, if you have not obeyed him yet, um, to come into a relationship with him, get to know him, and then obey him once you get to know him, that you can have a part in this instead of the part of all of those tormented things that we talked about uh, just a short while ago. And uh, Paul wanted the church at Thessalonica um, to be aware of the blessings that they had, how important it is to live in the presence of God. Uh, moving on to verse 11. Um, Paul says, therefore, we also pray um, always for you that our God will count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all of the good pleasures of his goodness and the works of his, and the work of uh, faith uh, with power. So um, again, Paul um, is praying for these people. Um, to uh, even grow more. Um, he didn't want them to become stagnant, uh, satisfied uh, with being um, loving one another. He wanted them to love one another more. He didn't want them to grow satisfied with the level of faith that um, he, they had. He, he wanted them to grow even more, um, especially in light of the things that he just discussed with them concerning um, the judgment and, 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 and uh, how God was gonna turn things around and make things uh, worth what they were going through. Um, and so uh, again, he calls on um, them to be counted worthy. Um, and um, looking back again, um, worthy, what that means is it's a growing active faith. Um, this is just uh, what, what uh, we should look like if we are worthy of, of the things that Christ uh, or, or of the calling and the work uh, that Christ uh, has set out uh, for us to do. Um, we, we, our love towards one another um, will show our worthiness um, for um, the, the, the great uh, love and the, and the great actions um, that our Father uh, will do for us. Uh, for them, their patience, and for us, uh, Paul prayed for their patience already, um, and you know, uh, wanted them to understand that that's a part of what makes them worthy um, of of uh, the things that um, that uh, that that Christ has in store for them on that day. Uh, their faith and persecution and tribulation, as long as they can hold on uh, through faith and and. Uh, tribulation um, that that's equaling out um, in their worth um, and their endurance. They have to hold on regardless of what comes, regardless of what persecution uh, was to come. Um, they were to hold on and endure it um, and uh, and uh, even beyond what they were doing already. And don't forget, this is all about growth. Paul is trying to get these people to grow even more. 
So um, the, the point that what Paul is making here, or the point that I'm making here about this, is that we don't, should never be satisfied with where we are. Um, even if we have faith, um, even if our faith is active, um, our faith must grow. Um, and Paul prays, and we see this word worthy, uh, several times throughout this passage of scripture. And each time we see it, we can go back to these very things right here um, that, that makes us worthy. So let's look at these things and let's make sure that our faith is growing. Let's make sure that we're patient. Let's make sure we love one another. Let's make sure we endure and uh, make sure we uh, keep our faith uh, in, in um, all of the tribulation. And um, if you look back um, at the um, original prayer in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, uh, verses 4 and 5, um, you, you, you'll see uh, Paul praying for these very things. And um, that, especially with their faith, it was an exceeding growing, exceedingly growing faith. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, and then um, verse number 12. Um, that the name of the Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and you in him, according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, and, um, you know, um, we, we, this goes uh, without uh, much saying um, that, that uh, we, we've got to uh, live in ways that um, give Christ glory um, in, in all that we do. Um, so um, I understand the magnitude of that. And you know, that plays out too uh, in our worth, in our worthiness. Um, so uh, make sure that we are living um, in ways that are pleasing to God in all manners of life we have to bring glory and honor to him um and the, the the thing about this is when we bring glory and honor to him um he's he is going to bring glory and honor to us now i'm, I'm careful about saying that in this way because of our understanding sometimes um, and uh, when we think of that, we, we want the glory here and now. But um, just think about it in terms of what Paul just talked about um, with the resurrection um, and, and how at the present time, these folks were on the losing end of the stick. But um, again, um, in the last times, um, it's going to all be turned around. I want to leave you with this passage of scripture because I think it's significant um, in us understanding this whole thing. Um, when uh, Jesus himself speaks the word about uh, what um, we need to be doing um, and what we do not need to be doing. Uh, Matthew chapter 16, verses 24 through 27, uh, then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whosoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man will come in the glory of his father with his angels, and then he will reward each one according to his works. Jesus is coming again, um, and uh, again, it, there's a twofold purpose, um, and uh, both of them have to do with reward. Uh, those that follow him, those that um, lose their lives for his sake, um, they're gonna find their lives. But those who walk around today, um, 
trying to save their lives, um, at, especially at the expense of God's people and his word are gonna lose their lives. Um, and again, he lets us know he's coming with his angels um, to hand out those rewards. Um, homework, um, page 44, um, group three, please answer question 10. Uh, group one, please answer question 11. Group four, please answer question 13. And group two, please answer question 14. I want to just take a minute and um, tell you what a joy it was to uh, walk through these passages of scripture with you. Um, just a word uh, for those who may not share in our convictions or, or if you're just someone who's seeking uh, to know the Lord. Um, we, um, not only uh, myself, but all of the teachers at the University Church of Christ um, honestly believe uh, what the Bible says, and we, uh, we honestly feel that it can withstand investigation. Uh, therefore, if you have any questions about anything that's been said by uh, myself, um, I can personally respond to you or um, any of the other teachers that have um, come or will come uh, because we certainly stand uh, ready to defend those things that are in God's word. Uh, so we just want to put that out there for you, uh, especially if you uh, have questions about some of the things um, concerning the Bible um, and concerning especially the New Testament church, uh, in which there seems to be much confusion in our world about. So we just want to make sure that uh, you understand that um, the door is open, um, and uh, you can contact us uh, through um, our uh, social media pages, um, and um, you can just request to uh, talk to me, uh, Brother Jeffrey Finch, and um, they'll, the message will get to me, and we'll gladly uh, get with you and try to help you with any misunderstandings or um, any questions or uh, any way that we can help you. Um, God bless you all. I um, look forward to seeing you on Wednesday um, and uh, um, stay healthy and, and keep the saints in your prayers and love one another. Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, thank you again for this time and we pray that you would just help us that uh, we'll be able to understand more of what you will have us to do that there'll be more of us more uh, that we can believe uh, that we can uh, act on and obey. Uh, we just ask that you would just bless our hearts, uh, bless each one that's listened to this particular Bible study um, and, um, and all of your word, Father. We just pray that it has been um, dealt with in a way that men can understand. All of this we ask in your son Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>